and welcome back to another episode from The Vine. I know last week we had actually started a two-part series on Kingdom Character, but this week we're going to take a break from that because this week is actually a very, very important week for the church as we uh, celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, hence why we have Easter. And so today we're actually going to look at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're actually going to look at Paul's letter to the church in Corinth. Now, in the church of Corinth, there were actually some that were arguing that there was no physical resurrection of believers. There's no physical resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is probably had, probably one of the most controversial uh, conversations amongst atheists, uh, amongst those who uh, don't even believe in the resurrection. And so today we're just going to kind of unpack the resurrection, so to speak. Now, the understanding of, of, of the resurrection, now we understand the death of Jesus was necessary. Okay, we get that. We understand that his, his death on the cross was to pay for our sins. But what was so significant about his resurrection. So let's start in verse 3 of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And the Bible says this, For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, <clears throat> that he was raised on the third day, and that he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to the apostles, last of all, as to one ultimately born who also appeared to me. And so Paul responded to uh, the Corinthian church who didn't believe in the resurrection, uh, he responded by arguing that if there is no resurrection of Jesus Christ, then prophecy would not have been fulfilled. Not only that, he argued that the resurrection of Jesus prepared the way for us to be physically raised with new bodies as well. So check this out. So in verse 12, Paul continues, Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. We have even found to be misrepre misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those who have been fallen then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have also perished. <clears throat> if in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to Pity. So let's kind of unpack this passage. In this passage, <clears throat> there are implications for us if Jesus was not raised from the dead. What are those? So in each case, we're going to just kind of discuss this. So in verse 14, Paul says this, And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain. It's useless. So everything that the apostles were actually talking about and preaching about were all based on the fact that Jesus died, conquered death, and as a result, rose to new life. If this foundational teaching is not true, then all their other teachings would also crumble. Every hope they proclaim would be nothing more than empty promises. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was in the apostles' situation, if I was in the position of the disciples, I would want to go out, I would want to tell people about what I had seen, what I experienced, uh, just the excitement of being able to see Jesus after he had been resurrected. That was an honor and a privilege. 
But if Jesus had never been raised from the dead, <clears throat> why would I be preaching about this? Why would I be excited about this? So if you actually remember, if you actually go back to the, uh, after Jesus had died, the high priest of the temple decided that they wanted to make sure that this guy was really dead because they were fearful about what Jesus had said prior to his death about destroying the temple and in three days raising it up again. And so this fear that the high priest had was actually birthed out of this idea that, that he was actually going to be resurrected. And if that had happened, everything that they had done would have been completely in vain. And so as we look at this, <clears throat> Not only does the Apostle Paul say that the preaching and the teaching was useless, but that our faith would also be useless as well. Check out verse 14 again. He says, and if Christ has not been raised, <clears throat> then our preaching is in vain. And your faith is also in vain as well. So if Jesus died and stayed dead, then he would have been defeated by death. If he is dead, he is dead. Yet Christ's whole mission was to come to give us eternal life. It is true that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross would have paid the penalty for our sin, but apart from the resurrection, there would be no way for us to be free from the grip of death. Jesus being raised from the dead conquered death. Had he not been raised from the dead, yes, it would have paid the penalty for our sin, but it would not have freed us from the grip of death. We would have been completely and eternally separated from God. Our sinful bodies <clears throat> took us to the grave. We need new bodies in order to rise to new life. We were never designed to live solely as spirits, since that would fall short of God's perfect design for humanity. So not only is Paul pointing out that if the resurrection of Jesus Christ was not true, not only would the preaching be useless, not only would the, our faith be useless, but that the apostles were actually false witnesses. Check out verse 15. We are even found, so after he says that not only was our, pre our preaching in vain, but our faith is in vain, he also goes on to say that we are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. So Paul is basically saying this, if everything that, if, if Jesus was never raised from the dead, we would actually be false witnesses. We would be lying to you if that was not true. The apostles actually proclaim, if you actually go back uh, to the beginning of the passage of scripture when he says this he says that it, he says that uh, for I delivered to you the mo uh, as of first importance what I also received that Christ died for our sins in accordance to the scriptures but that he also had appeared to 500 brothers at one time verse 5 of first Corinthians chapter 15 the apostles, the, the apostles had claimed that they were eyewitnesses to a physically resurrected Jesus. They also claimed, as did 500 other people, to have seen him, touched him, and eaten with him. Now, 500 people. Now, of course, you know, 12 disciples, well, actually it was 11 disciples. Because remember, Jesus Iscariot had actually committed suicide over, uh, over his, uh, his, his betrayal of Jesus. And so... It would be one thing if only 12 men were going around talking about this, but 500 people all proclaiming the same exact thing, that they had seen the resurrected Jesus. They had, they had seen him, they had touched him, they had eaten with him. So if Jesus was not resurrected, then all of those 500 people would be blatant liars and deceivers. And if that is the case, then nothing they taught should be believed and every Corinthian church that they were writing to uh, should not exist. They should all receive that as 100% lie. So not only does Paul say that our, <clears throat> that our faith is useless, that our teaching was useless, that if Christ was never resurrected, that the apostles would actually be considered as false witnesses. But then he goes on to say in verse 17, 
uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He says, and if Christ was not raised, then your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. So it goes back to say that you're not only is your faith futile, but you are still lost in your sin. You are still drowning in your sin. Our hope, our hope to be saved from our sins is based on the fact that the risen Jesus sends his spirit to indwell in us, applying his death and righteousness to our lives. So if Jesus is actually still in the grave, then he is simply a martyr at best and cannot send his spirit to cleanse us and to give us eternal life. Because remember, the Holy Spirit is what convicts us of our sin. The Holy Spirit is what causes us to turn away from our sin. So if Christ was never re resurrected, he himself is still trapped by the grave for the consequences of our sin. And if this is true, then there is no way to receive forgiveness of our sin. And faith in Jesus cannot be, cannot accomplish anything for us in this life or in eternity. Now students, I don't know about you, but I am a strong believer in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm a very strong believer. And I say that not because of the fact that I was raised in a Christian home, because at some point or another, you yourself, as a student, as an adult, are gonna have to come to the terms of realizing whether or not to believe in the Bible or not. Whether or not to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are accepting the fact that you acknowledge the fact that Jesus was raised from the dead. So Paul then goes on to say, that if Jesus was never raised from the dead, that those who died before are lost forever. If Christ had never been risen from the dead, so if you actually, let me, uh, I'm actually getting ahead of myself, uh, go back to verse 16, where Jesus says that, where Paul says this, and those who have been, those who have fallen asleep, those who have died in Christ, have perished. They're gone. They're dead. If Jesus had never been raised from the dead, then they are still dead. If Christ had not risen, then those who died in the past are still trapped in their sin and there could be no hope for them. They're trapped in the judgment of death. And then he concludes this passage of scripture by stating this, for, for if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised, but then he says in verse 8, uh, 19, he says this, if in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are all, we of all people are to be pitied amongst men. Pity us. If Jesus was never raised from the dead, that we have no hope for an eternal future with God at all. This means that we have focused our faith on a hope that does not even exist. That we have not aligned ourselves with a belief system that is a lie, that all we can look forward to is judgment. There is no future hope, no present hope, and no hope for those who have died before us. So through the indwelling of the spirit of the resurrected Christ, our standing with God changes in several ways. So if you actually ha uh, have your Bible still, I want you to flip over to 1 John. <clears throat> 1 John chapter 4, and we're actually going to look in verse 10. 1 John 4 verse 10 and the Bible says this in this is love that not that we have loved God but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation of our sins now what does propitiation mean now that's a pretty big word a mouthful of a word but basically the propitiation means that the anger of God was actually removed from us through the death of Jesus Christ. God's righteous anger that we deserve because of our sin was actually placed on Jesus at the cross. This implies that if we are if we are apart from Christ, we will receive the full extent of God's wrath against our sin. That's incredible. That Jesus became the propitiation for our sin. Not only that, so not only does through the indwelling of the spirit of the resurrected Christ change our standing with God, 
uh, in the first way is propitiation, and the second way is justification. So in Romans chapter 5, verse 18, the Bible says this, Therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification for all men. What does justification mean? Justification means that we are declared righteous before God. This is possible as the death penalty for our sins is paid by Jesus Christ and his righteousness is, is, is placed on our lives as a gift. We, the guilty, are pardoned by the judge and are now declared not guilty. Isn't that amazing? That through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, not only did Jesus Christ become our propitiation, not only did we receive justification, but we also received sanctification. So if you actually looked at 1 Corinthians 6, uh, verse 11, it says this, And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. So what does sanctification mean? Sanctification means that we are set free from the bondage of sin and set apart to God. When we accept Jesus Christ into our life, when we accept the resurrected Jesus Christ into our life, we are sanctified through the Spirit of God. We are set apart. We no longer live in sin. We pursue righteousness. We are declared righteous before God through our justification. So students, the last element of this is the fact that not only are, was Jesus the propitiation for our sin, which led to our justification, which led to our sanctification, but it also leads to our regeneration. Titus chapter 3, verse 5, it says this, He saved us. Not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit. So what does regeneration mean? Regeneration means that we are changed and made new. At the point of salvation, at the point where you accepted Jesus Christ, the resurrected Jesus Christ in your life, at the time of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we are given a new holy nature immediately. Our mindset changes, our heart changes. We no longer desire the things of the world. However, the Holy Spirit doesn't even stop there. He continues to renew our minds, which is a progressive sanctification. Eventually, He will renew our bodies at the return of Christ. Students, there is so much that happened when Jesus was raised from the dead. Not only did he fulfill prophecy, prophecy, but he actually bridged the gap between mankind and God the Father. He bridged that gap, and all because God loved his children. John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world. That means you and me, students. That means you and me, leaders. That means you and me, adults. He loved us so much that while we were still in our sin, he died for us. He died to pay for our sin. He accepted the full cup of God's wrath, as David Platt says in his book, Radical, that he drank the full cup of God's wrath down to the last drop. And he did so out of love for us. Easter is an amazing opportunity for you and I as believers to celebrate the resurrected Jesus. And I don't necessarily need a holiday to remind me to do that. I don't necessarily need a holiday to, to remind me to celebrate the resurrected Jesus. I celebrate that anyway because I'm excited about that. The fact that the God of the universe, the God that, that made Adam and Eve out of dust and, and uh, he made Adam out of dust and he created Eve out of uh, the ribcage of Adam. And, and not only that, he, he saved the Israelites from Egypt and, and he parted the waters so that they could cross the Red Sea. That same God exists today. And that same God sent his son, Jesus Christ, down to us when he died on a cross. He was beaten brutally. He was laughed at. He was tormented. And then he died on a cross for you and I and was raised to life three days later 
conquering death, hell, and the grave. I don't know about you, but that brings me so much hope. Students, I hope that you received a lot out of today's lesson. And as you go through today, I pray that you would remember the resurrected Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for joining us today. Have a blessed one. Thank you so very much for watching today. If you have any questions or concerns, please email us at divine at chbc.org or you can visit our online website at chbc.org. We'll see you next time.